Hello, and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Dog, the digital agency podcast where we're talking to the people behind the agency, the service providers, coaches, and mentors to discuss what it's like working with you, the agency leader. With your host, Chris Simmons, the Agency Accelerator, talking to a different agency growth partner in each episode. What they love about working with you, what they wish you knew, all will be revealed. Okay, so let us begin. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, voiceover guy. And on the podcast today, we've got Bella. How are you doing, Bella? I'm really good, thank you. I'm really pleased that you're here all the way from warm and sunny Andorra today. Um, you're one of the uh, agency advisors working with the OMG Center, and I know full well what you do because you're excellent at it. But for the, everyone listening right now, can you just give us a bit of a rundown of who the heck are you? And what the heck do you do? What are your creds? So I call myself your client experience and operations consultant. So in essence, I work with agencies to align their operations and client experience to ensure that delivery is smooth. The founder gets the ability to step out the day to day without without absolutely losing their mind and everything runs smoothly, increasing profitability, retention mm-hmm. of clients and just creating a better business experience all around. And we did a webinar a few weeks ago, didn't we, about um, mm-hmm. like getting feedback, leveraging it and things like that. That's one small component of what you yeah. of what you do. I think there's like a there's a whole program involved in this, isn't there? And it's it starts off with kind of questions. <laughs> Yeah, so I I have my I've coined it the five star feedback loop. So my background is actually in travel and hospitality originally. Um, I spent eight years working in private travel where experience uh, expectations are high, mm-hmm. long hours, the w- hard work to put in with demanding clients, all kinds of different all kinds of different things moving at the same time, super fast pace. So I understand exactly what's needed for a an absolutely outstanding experience and it's often the fine details but so developing from that experience working with a brand and marketing consultancy i could see the agency process in delivery and Mm. saw working with the founder that really wanted to start working on generating new business she kept finding herself being pulled back in to either correct work from different members of the team or having to manage communication of clients, expectations, sales, all the hats were happening at the same time. So throughout the framework, we really address kind of those five different areas of being able to help the founder step back from the day to day to be able to focus on that growth. So we start by going in depth on your services, your clients, who they are, which is so important because without actually really understanding your clients, you don't know what you're actually giving to them and how that service impacts them. And I find that there's so many um, agencies that I know that really focus on delivering an output that they they know that they're going to deliver, but they're not mm. aware of how their client moves through that journey. And that often comes with misaligned expectations. And therefore, we can't actually deliver upon what they want and exceed that. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, you know, it's a story as old as time in a sense, because quite a lot of agencies have these problems. And and you know, part of accelerating your your growth is kind of stepping away from the the day to day, and you can't do that without without kind of addressing quite a lot of the stuff that you you work on. Um, and yeah. quite a lot of agency leaders as well, they start an agency because they're great at what they deliver, and they learn to run an agency as they go. And sadly, the lessons are usually a lot harder unless you kind of go through a program of of, of growth or a program of of support. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it's um, it, it's one of the fun things about working with agencies from my point of view is you get to sort of help those people get through those things and accelerate them past that that side of stuff. Mm. Um, you, you, you know, similarly, I'm guessing, you know, because you can see where these these bottlenecks are and where these where these uh, um, not issues, but where these um, things slow their growth down because, you know, jumping from one hat to the other or one problem yeah. to the next. It's just it's context switching on a on a pretty horrible scale eventually and it's quite tiring isn't it yeah it i've seen so many i did a post about this on linkedin not that long ago around how many times i've had burnout in the last or nervous breakdown in the last four months Mm -hmm. and it's increasing and increasing as there's so much more pressure on a founder to be able to grow 
the agency, manage the economy, the environment, every external factor that's going on alongside everything with team issues, client issues, profitability. There's so much weaved in there that if we can focus on the fundamental operations that can support your growth, making sure that you are able to manage that increased capacity, it can completely change everything for you as a founder. And I know because founders and I'm working with founders, they are so passionate about what they do. It's honestly, it's so amazing to work with founders that are, they truly are absolutely exceptional at their craft and they bring on people that also are truly exceptional at their craft. And they're so passionate about working with their clients and making them have success. But often it comes at the cost of their success and that doesn't, or their mental state or their ability to be profitable because they're trying to manage everything else. And if we can support that, then it can help them have the business or the agency that they wanted to start creating in the first place. Absolutely spot on. Hey, voiceover guy here. Sorry to interrupt. Um, If you're looking to accelerate the growth of your agency, then check out omg.center forward slash info. Um, Oh, sorry, Chris. Crikey, bit rude. That guy, pay him once and he keeps coming back. I think he wants another another invoice paid. Um, So, Bella, what do you love the most about working with agencies? What's one of your favorite parts? I think being able to just be a part of their journey but seeing one the founder in their element but two Mm. the passion that they have for what they do like I said before it's just being able to work with someone that's so passionate about their clients delivers an absolutely exceptional output and really really wants to progress um I think working with other ambitious founders as well is something that I can see in myself as an ambitious person that they want to get to where they want to be and if i can support them that that is huge mm. um, but they're being able to witness the culture often the witty banter that goes on within an agency the blood sweat and tears that they put into everything it's it's quite uh i th- find them really friendly as well and i don't know about yeah. anyone else but i think agency owners are great so it's a great industry to be able to work in yeah i i, I love the rewards of um of seeing not just what you've done but what you've helped achieve for yeah. other people those yeah. people have uh, you know they've they've come to you with something that they need your help with you've helped them but they've done the hard work to actually get the results and it's really cool seeing it it's uh, it's just nice to see lots and lots of wins happen in succession when you when you're working in this in this way and yeah. you, you know it like you say they're very friendly and and, and nice people to work with and it's probably because the industry itself is relatively open and it means that you know you can have proper frank nice conversations with people enjoy what you're talking to them about but also you know you you're learning as they're learning because each one of these agencies as similar as they are they're all bloody different yeah 100 percent. i mean you can see that with the type of the projects that an agency works with every agency has a different specialism or a different design flair or a Mm. specific um message or positioning that makes them stand out and it's looking at how can we enhance that but also be able to help support them so that when they do reach that next stage of growth that they've got everything that they need in order to be able to succeed absolutely absolutely and and the thing thing with quite a lot of this is you know when, when we do the accelerator stuff um with agencies it's not a case of you get to the end of the six months and bang away you go there's a there's a traction element to this and you you, yeah. you, you know you, you um you set the course with them you help them run it and then you know there is a check-in aspect you do need to keep seeing it and also you know for your own sanity it's nice to see the the results go on uh, on their social pro- pro- uh, platforms uh, afterwards and things like that as well um conversely though what what what's something that kind of frustrates you a little bit about working with agencies obviously within reason because they are all lovely people i think for me it's with the nature of what i do um agency founders don't necessarily look proactively at their experience and operations and if that's my only criticism is that i would probably say i would love for them to look proactively at this we Mm. look proactively about marketing support sales support which is absolutely essential but if we've got marketing and sales support and those leads start pouring in and we then can't manage them then the downside of that is that there's missing communication internally. We end up losing the clients that we've worked so hard to get. And 
that if we look proactively at putting in the right operations and a client experience that can move our clients through that process, retain mm. them, create advocates out of them and upsell them, then that gives us a huge opportunity to actually grow faster. Yeah. And then the marketing support is even more impactful. So let's look proactively at this because if we can put that into place, then we can start to be able to really you know, really mm -hmm. catapult that growth as mm -hmm. opposed to looking reactively at this when something goes wrong. Because if we're looking at this when something goes wrong, it takes so much longer to be able to build back. Yeah. So so would you say that's, that's I don't want to put words into your mouth because it's your interview. Um, so what would you say in your experience sort of separates the best agencies from, say, the rest, the ones that kind of just chug along? For me, having a simple experience can go miles. So mm -hmm. making, often with agencies, services can be really heavy to deliver and every time they're bespoke. If we can almost not productize it to a level that is doesn't have any character to it, but we want to be able to streamline our dis delivery service so much so that a client knows exactly what they're getting when they come on board, yeah. that you can deliver this without you as the founder being having to be there. And that would be something that once you can do this over and over again, and it's standardized, this gives the agency a huge ability to be able to keep that growth. And that's something that I see from really successful agencies is a standardization in their processes in their experience and their delivery yeah. in order to be able to do these in their sleep mm. and and i and i think it's so hard to do where there's um i was talking to an agency leader, agency leader um just yesterday actually about mm. like the balance between productization and like the the need for that bespoke level of service yeah. whilst maintaining the actual model of an agency which is you know thinking then doing and then you have you know exec level seniors and so on and so yeah. forth but you know if you want to do excellent work and you hire excellent seniors and you want to be known for excellent things you can't hem them into a productized version no. of a service because that's a million checkpoint list equally if you want to do lots of very similar work at a high volume you need to have a productized thing but you lose out on some of the creative thinking and the balance is really hard to strike because ultimately you're dealing with completely different people all the time on both sides client and 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 staff where where do you sort of stand on that i'm I, i'm i'm still struggling to decide whether or not i would if i was to start an agency again go for um uh high paid high confidence highly creative delivery thinkers and low mm. levels of um uh of productized um or or processed work or lots and lots of people delivering lots and lots of work but following a checklist i would it's a really interesting one because i think every agency is completely different and what they yeah. offer is completely, completely different. So you, I, I'd say you have to take this on a case by case basis. It would be really difficult for me to go to every agency and say, you need to productize exactly what it is that you do, because without knowing your clients, your services, and specifically what your output is and what's needed mm -hmm. from the team internally to be able to deliver that specific, that quality of output, it's very hard to say. But from my perspective, a lot of the agencies that I have worked with all have a standardized framework that they use, whether that's for strategy and then action and implementation or strategy planning and implementation. There's mm. always a consequential section of events. So every client's different, every project's different. But if we can follow a similar framework, we know what's needed internally and it helps us to be able to understand how we can make our services more profitable without yeah. having to put so much heavy loading in. So mm. it's understanding what that framework is for you to be able to deliver the service that you're offering. If there is high level strategy involved, that takes, it's very complex and can be very, very different. And then what happens next? It's just understanding the consequential events of what happens through a project that helps us to be able to, in essence, streamline and productize the thinking behind it so that it makes delivery easier. Yeah, I think that would be where I would stand on it. I don't think that I think there's things that can be productized potentially, 
but it really depends on the agency itself. Yeah, and the 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 struggle or uh, additional layer to that is that you're selling something which ultimately is um, an invisible, intangible thing with numbers that are related to it that are subject to interpretation and also rely on the client understanding the work and the results of the work. Um, yeah. it's, it's especially hard with SEO. It's less less difficult with paid stuff because there is a click plus this equals that. Um, less difficult with things like digital PR if you're just counting links. But for, mm -hmm. for quite a lot of intangible things, you're sort of saying, hey, we've got this methodology or this process and we follow these things. We know what good looks like. Here's some results we've had before, but give us the money now and we'll probably get you somewhere in the future. Um, this yeah. is where, you know, your your you know you come in and and you can help make this work for an agency in a in a in a um way that they'll understand how to better not just do it but communicate it yeah because articulating that value is very very challenging um yeah. that and i know for myself because a lot of the clients that i work with we do the initial work but when it comes to return on investment for their clients mm. depending on their sales cycle it could be a, a few months it could be a year depending on what that product so that delivery service looks like yeah so it's understanding as clients go through this and something that i do with clients specifically is i speak directly to their clients and team to mm. be able to understand where that value is where those points of frustration or those points of benefit were how did they describe the transformation going through the process yeah. so when we look at clients that you may have worked with previously, maybe it's six months ago or a year ago, we can then actually quantify or qualify their results personal to them because at the end of the day, it's quite subjective. And yeah. I always think with quantifiable results, the, the, you know, the statistics or the money metrics that we get for clients, mm -hmm. the qualitative side of that is the process that they've been through really helps give context to those numbers. Without that, you're just giving numbers for the sake of numbers. Testimonials for the sake of testimonials doesn't do anything be, for you, but the context and the mix of both can really support. So if we can get that feedback from our clients, whether it is six months down the line or a year down the line, that really helps us to be able to articulate how valuable the service that we're offering really is. Yeah. Yeah, spot on. Yeah, I can't, can't disagree with any of that. You're the expert. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, you, you live in Andorra. It's a beautiful place, absolutely magical. Um, you know, you go out in the summer when, the, when, when you can walk in the mountains. You're walking through the mountains in the woods and it's so magical and beautiful. You happen across a magic wand. However, this magic wand can only be used once. What one thing will you use that magic wand on to change for all agencies in one go? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I think it would probably be my be fixing my only frustration. It would be to help agencies look proactively at their experience and operations. Mm. And that would be the one thing I'd probably change because if we look proactively at our clients, our team, our operations, our foundations, and that supports everything else that helps them grow. And I'd say yeah. that would be my one real wave, my magic one wave, and it would be help mm. shift the mindset of agency owners often. And it's a real challenge because I understand working for an agency founder, how difficult when everything else you've got to manage is to start looking proactively and say, well, this is a nice to have. We don't, we don't need it right now. Yeah. But if we can see it as a necessity, because it is a necessity, and without it, we end up fumbling around. And often that help yeah. that causes us as the founder to be pulled back in. And even if we're not in the day-to-day -day delivery and we're in a larger agency, we as agency founders, you can see just the 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 time being wasted, the profitability margins going down, and you're looking at what is happening and why can't I see it? And that's mm. where things like this help solve that problem. Pretty good use of a magic one there, Bella. Thanks very <laughs> much for for coming on the podcast and waving it around for a little bit that's been great thank you thank you for having me it's really nice to be able to talk about i i love doing what i do and i love helping other people so it's been nice to chat about it wonderful and I, and and when this goes live it's going to get snipped up sent everywhere and everyone's going to be able to hear all about it so thanks so much for Perfect. coming on 
Um, in our next episode, we'll be talking with another agency advisor, mentor or trainer, or even one of our partners. So thanks very much for listening and speak to you all soon. Ha, ha, ha.